Okay, hello everyone. Let's go ahead and start off with this topic, which will be called vectors. Now, in mathematics, there are two mathematical quantities that we're going to be dealing with with this particular topic. And one is the vector and the other is the scalar. And we need to be very clear from the beginning what the difference between the two are. Now, if you take a look at the vector, it is going to include direction and magnitude. Whereas, if we go ahead and talk about the scalar, it is only going to be have, it's only going to have a magnitude. Now, when we go ahead and talk about magnitude, you're talking about a particular numerical value that is associated with a particular quantity. Okay? So, both of these will have that characteristic, of course, because it's going to be a mathematical quantity. Only the vector is going to have the direction. So, if you want to go about determining whether something is a scalar quantity or a vector quantity, the most important question is to ask, does that quantity also have direction? Okay, and so if it does, then you know that you're dealing with a vector. Okay, now, a couple of things that you must be able to do with regards to working with vectors. Okay, when you work with vectors, you have to be able to work with them both algebraically and geometrically. So as we're going through the course, always ask yourself those que the question, do you understand it, vectors and what we're working with, with regards to vectors, in algebraic and geometrical form? If you can do both of those and they reinforce each other, then you'll have a really good understanding of how vectors operate. So let's go ahead and start off with some of the basics here with regards to our algebraic and geometric interpretations of vectors. And of course, if we're going to start with the algebraic side, we have to look at how we're going to write it and describe it mathematically. And we use notation to do so. So what we can do is we can call this vector A, we call this vector AB, and this vector BA. Now notice one of the things that's uh, one of the things that you should notice is that the little arrow that is above it is always pointing to the right. And so it's starting from the left, going to the right. Now, if you want to go ahead and make it an arrow itself, that's fine as well. But that notation is always going to be there. Now, the other notation that is possible to use, but we can't necessarily write, is a bold letter, a bold lowercase letter. Now, if you take a look at the book, you'll recognize that that's the case, and you can go ahead and use, uh, you, you need to be able to realize that if you see a bold lowercase letter, then it's referring to a vector. Otherwise, when we write it, we need to write it using that notation. Now, let's go ahead and see what this notation actually refers to in its geometric sense. Now, if we go ahead and talk about the geometric representation of a vector, you have to have a ray. Okay? It is going to have a ray, and it's going to have endpoints here. And if we go ahead and talk about this as the vector A, I can actually go ahead and talk about this also as the vector AB. So these two, given this particular representation, are actually equal to each other. These two are the same. Now, if we go ahead and take a look at this one though, notice that the endpoints are reversed. So in other words, the direction is different. So that means then that this is no longer equal to these two, but it's going to be something else. And we'll go ahead and see if you can figure out exactly what that might be. Okay, so if we go ahead and talk then about vectors, if we go ahead and refer to them, we always have to talk about its direction and its magnitude because those are the two essential characteristics that are needed in order for a quantity to be considered a vector quantity. So if we talk about the direction, it is established by the order of the endpoints. So notice that AB, the starting point A, any point B, is going to be different from the vector BA where the starting point is B and the ending point is A. Okay, and of course the direction is also going to be note, uh, is also going to be shown by the direction of the ray. Okay, now we haven't yet talked about magnitude. How do we go about talking about magnitude? Now, if I went ahead and took a ruler and I measured that, then of course that length would then be the magnitude of this particular vector. How do we go about writing that? We go about writing it using this. We say that the absolute value of A, or sometimes called the modulus, or sometimes just the magnitude of A, in other words, this length, is of course going to be equal to the modulus or the magnitude of AB. And notice that it is also going to be equal to the modulus of the vector that goes from B to A, even though the direction was different. So notice that the lengths are the same, 
but the directions are different, okay, in that particular case. But being that we know that all of those magnitudes are the same, we can go ahead and say that's true. Whereas over here, we're talking about the direction, and so therefore they are not the same. Now, what we want to also go about taking a look at is how do we then determine if two vectors are in fact equal to each other? So say, for example, if we have the vector A is equal to the vector B, the two things that you have to consider, of course, are the two very fundamental things which designate or differentiate between a vector from a scalar. You need to talk about its direction and you need to talk about its magnitude. In order for two scalars to be equal, of course, just the magnitudes need to be equal. But if we're talking about vector quantities now, which are based upon these two characteristics, both of them have to be equal in order for the two vectors to be the same or equivalent. So that's why here we said that the vector VA is not the same thing as the vector AB because the directions are the same even though the magnitudes are different. So if we can guarantee that the direction is the same and we can also guarantee that the magnitude of those two vectors are the same, then we can go ahead and say that vector A is equal to vector B. Okay, we'll go ahead and talk a little bit more in class as to how we can continue to investigate some of these ideas with regards to how vectors and scalars are different, how to be able to work with vectors algebraically and geometrically, how to use the notation, how to talk about the notation and what we're referring to with regards to direction and magnitude, and also how to determine if two vectors are actually equivalent and equal to each other. Okay, so we'll see how you do, and we'll talk about this a little bit more in class the next time that we meet. Okay, good luck, see you later, bye-bye.